Hiya folks, Simon here. Welcome back to the channel. It is a stunningly beautiful day here in the UK. Perfect, I would say, for some drone flying with my Mini 3 Pro. Now, yesterday I put out a video explaining some problems, some issues I have been having with the various latest firmwares on the Mini 2 and the Mini 3 Pro. And that included some problems with the compass, along with some connection issues to the satellites, as well as just various range issues when we're not actually flying out that far in areas with little interference. Now, no sooner having put that update out, and by the way, thank you so much to everybody that's posted their own experiences and comments on that video. Sorry I couldn't get to respond to them all, but I really do appreciate you taking the time to share your thoughts there. No sooner putting that out, have DJI put out a new firmware update for the Mini 3 Pro, along with a new app update as well, 1.6.4 for both iOS and Android. Now, a couple of things that I want to mention. First of all, I have not been able to test the Mini 3 Pro out with the latest app version yet, 1.6.4, because it hasn't at the moment, anyway, as to the time making this video, been put out to the RC smart screen controller. Now, I have tried connecting the DJI Mini 3 Pro to my Mini 2 controller with my phone, but it's just not having it. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong there. It just keeps saying firmware mismatch. It isn't working. So I can't show you any changes that the app itself is bringing today with the Mini 3 Pro, but we are gonna test out the new firmware that's been put out. I think it was this morning it, it showed up for me to say it was released. So we're gonna check that out. Now there is no new firmware update as of yet for the Mini 2, but hopefully if some of these issues are fixed with the Mini 3 Pro, then we should see those coming to the Mini 2 with the next firmware update as well. But honestly, I've no idea what to expect with this. I've not yet flown the drone on the new firmware, so we're going to experience that together. And as always, folks, thank you so much for watching. And if you're new around here, please do consider subscribing for future Mini 2 and Mini 3 Pro content. Yeah, I'm having to sit under cover today because the sun is blisteringly warm and I will burn to a crisp if I stand out in it for any longer than a couple of minutes. So what I want to do is first of all just show you while we're getting a satellite connection here, which we are, which is a nice start, show you what the firmware version currently is. And aircraft firmware for the DJI Mini 3 Pro for me is 0100.01. This isn't the same version, of course, as the Mini 2, and that's due to the fact that they're different drones. Now, I do suspect that when an update occurs for the Mini 2 for the firmware that improves flight or whatever, if that's gonna boost the Mini 3 as well, then the firmwares are gonna be very similar, even though they will have different version numbers. So yeah, let's see if some of my problems have been resolved with this latest firmware. And the first thing I noticed is that we did get a satellite connection pretty quickly. Now I've got 18 satellites, which is more than sufficient really to get a good flight going here. So let's go ahead and take off. Take off. Okay. I'm just checking out the field. My dad's been mowing it because he's actually getting married around here in uh, a few days on Saturday. So that's why I'm trying to get some drone content recorded now because the field's gonna be out of action for making videos for YouTube, probably for the weekend. So he's working hard on getting the field prepped, ready for the marquees and that to come down. And okay, let's go ahead now and get a little bit of height Before we go further over the trees, I'm going to gain some more height here. Now let me just check the compass because that is one of the things I've been having problems with. I'll go to a height of about 50 metres or so. Since I'm flying in a rural area, there's very little interference. And in times past, historically with the Mini 2, I've been able to get some really solid connections around this part. And it's been a great area for me to do various tests with the different app updates and firmware updates over the last few months, of, at least with the Mini 2. So let me just go ahead now and change this over to the compass. I'm, I'm not, oh yeah, I changed it back recently just because of how 
off it was. And yeah, the compass is still completely off. You can see it has me facing the opposite way to, to that which I am facing. It, it has me facing backwards, which of course I'm not. I'm directly facing towards the drone here. So it's off by, let's say 180 degrees there. Kind of weird. Yeah, I have calibrated the compass and I have calibrated the controller. So I'm just not sure why it's doing that. I'm assuming that's going to be fixed as part of an app update. I don't know if that's a, a problem with the hardware that needs fixing in the firmware. It might be. It might be. I really do not know. So yesterday with the Mini 2, it was starting to cut out around 350 to 400 metres. And I, I made sure to fly it back before I lost complete connection, but it wasn't far off doing that, which is highly unusual. As I say, for this area, you know, if I, if I face the gimbal down here, it's just woods, it's just green land. There are no buildings. To be honest, there's barely any people, you know, with phones and stuff. So interference around these parts is usually at an absolute minimum. That's why I like to, to test things out in this particular area. So I've got to where we got yesterday when we got down to just one signal bar. Now, yes, that was on the Mini 2, but again, the Mini 2 wasn't previously having issues here. So maybe this new firmware update, which hasn't yet been pushed to the Mini 2, is going to be solving things in terms of the connection. It was an 800 megabyte update, so it wasn't, you know, a small update by any means. We did drop to three bars there, but there's been no, no dropout on the screen itself. Hmm, I'm not 100% sure if there has been an improvement with the connection here, because now that I'm moving around, we are still getting those signal drops. Look, if I just face the gimbal back down again, there is a, a public path there. So I suppose you could say that, you know, people on their phones and stuff could cause a little bit of interference, but come on, that's gonna be minimal. It really is. And there isn't any people around anyway, so. And before anybody tells me, oh, when you start to lose signal interference, you can just take the drone higher. Yeah, I know you can do that. And you're absolutely right. That would help with the interference problems. But the point is, I never used to get interference problems over this location. And now I am. And that's what I'm trying to see if it has been resolved. It does feel a little bit more stable than it was when I did the previous firmware test on the DJI Mini 2. I mean, it has found connection again. Don't forget, because this is OcuSync technology, it is basic Wi-Fi technology, but it's able to switch channels on the fly. So as the signal begins to drop out, it can automatically switch to a stronger connection, a stronger channel. Whereas such uh, a drone such as the Mini 1, for example, the original Mavic Mini could not do that. So it would connect to the best Wi-Fi channel when you first update your home point when you take off, but then it will be fixed to that channel throughout the course of the flight. So when you see the signal dropping out, all going down to orange bars here, but then it automatically goes back to full, that's because the OcuSync technology has allowed the drone to automatically switch channels to whatever the best available is. So there we go, we've got uh, three signal bars, and now we're down to two. So this is obviously an area that, that it's struggling with, but if we fly around for a little bit, maybe take it a little bit higher up. Yep, you can see how the OcuSync has switched channels and now we're back up to almost full. Although it's interesting that there is a little bit of connection issues here. Again, there's nothing inherent in the area itself that I'm aware of that would cause it to do that. Uh, you know, especially because as I mentioned several times, this used to be a solid area where connection dropouts were incredibly rare and they do seem to happen more regularly. And unless something's been built underground that I can't see that would be causing Wi-Fi interference, I can only assume it's to do with the various changes that DJI have been making to the firmware. Don't get me wrong, the drone, the DJI Mini 3 Pro is flying really smoothly today and it's beautiful weather for the flight as well. I just wonder what it is that DJI have been doing behind the scenes 
that have just interrupted the performance a little bit over the last few weeks with their drones. I wonder if it's something they've done on purpose. I know that they have been putting a lot of effort in and have had to be putting a lot of effort in to make sure that they are meeting all of the requirements with their drones, especially here in the UK, but I'm sure in other parts of the world. And have they been sneaking out some little bits and bobs in their firmware that would be limiting the range and stuff to make sure that people aren't going too far beyond where they should really be flying, which is within line of sight? I don't know. You know, if they were doing that, then it's not something they would want to advertise, that's for sure. But I'm not saying that's what they have done. It's just kind of strange to me that we do seem to be getting these signal dropouts more regularly now, even though we're flying in the same areas where those dropouts no longer or didn't previously occur. You know, if I was flying in an urban environment over lots of houses, and I have done tests showing that recently, then yeah, we're not going to be getting anywhere near the 12 kilometres that DJI advertised for the Mini 3 Pro. That's to be expected. But over here in an urban, sorry, in a rural landscape, with no buildings, we'd be hopefully expecting more than four to 500 meters. <laughs> Although I do think the flight is smoother on this firmware than it was yesterday, I really do. I really do think it's smoother. <laughs> we did get a little bit of connection dropout, but nothing major. Also, Gavin HR kindly mentioned to me that with the latest firmware update, you could no longer fly backwards. However, I seem to be able to do that, so maybe that was a bug with the previous firmware that's been fixed, or maybe I misunderstood your comment there, Gavin, because backwards flying still seems to be an option for me, at least, right now. But again, maybe that was something that was just a bug in the last firmware that's now been fixed. Okay, looks like the dog walkers are coming out. I don't blame them in this weather, not at all. Such a beautiful day and no wind as well, which is always helpful for us drone flyers, isn't it, for us pilots? Okay, well, let's bring the drone down. There we go. Yeah, if ever you want to just quickly disable obstacle avoidance, whacking it into sports mode will turn off all of the obstacle avoidance sensors immediately. Just obviously bear in mind that the drone is going to move faster, so don't ram the sticks down if you do that. There we go. Nice smooth landing. Hey, maybe we could just go and say hello to the family before we uh, finish up for the day, since I can hear them all working hard in the garden. They won't mind or working hard prepping for my dad's wedding while I'm just sitting here making drone videos waving at us <laughs> we do all have fun with these drones I tell you that they're so much entertainment for the family and of course we can get some beautiful photographs and videos that you just couldn't get with a normal camera could you so we'll leave them in peace now as I come back in for the final landing and just share my thoughts on today's flight Just a few final thoughts. Annoyingly, my mic's died and now they are mowing just behind the camera, how inconsiderate. But I did just want to just say a few things. So yeah, I mean, based on the flight yesterday compared to the flight today, I do think there has been an improvement. Now, it might seem a little bit like apples and oranges because yesterday was a Mini 2, today was the Mini 3 Pro. But also remember, these issues I've been experiencing have been with both drones. It's only due to the fact that the Mini 3 Pro has had a firmware update and the Mini 2 hasn't yet, so I did want to do this test on this drone. But overall, I'm thinking that there are still issues. Now, whether these are issues that DJI are actually going to resolve or whether these are behind the scenes changes, as I mentioned, to make sure that people aren't flying in ways that they're not supposed to be flying. But folks, I do hope this video has been helpful to you. And once we get the update for the Mini 3 Pro on the controller for the flyer, I'll make sure to give it a whiz with that as well, just to see if that makes any further improvements.
conditions of the flight. But thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you've enjoyed the video today and I hope it's been informative to some of you as well. Don't forget you can support the channel just by subscribing and if you do that you will also be notified of future content and videos as I put them out. But I hope you all have a wonderful day. I've got a busy weekend ahead of me so yeah I'll see you next week in some state or other. Take care guys and goodbye.